Hi and welcome to Lincoln Javen Crafts needle felting tutorials. Today we're going to be making these macarons, um, these gorgeous little um, cake type projects and you can display them in a bowl, you can put them on a lovely summer garland for, for sort of summer bunting, all sorts of things you can do, you can attach them to a wreath but they're really easy, really fast and a lot of fun to make so we'll just get on. So all you'll need is a felting base of some sort. I've got a hessian mat here filled with rice. Um, you can use foam, that's absolutely, foam's just as good. And uh, some sort of topper if you've got it. I've got one of my eco mats here, which is 100% wool felt topper. And what that does is it just protects the surface of the rice mat. And the same if you're using a foam mat. If you use one of these, you'll very rarely need to replace your foam. Um, if at all, so it's it's a really eco-friendly way of, of doing it and it's also um, less expensive in the long run. Now you can go straight into um, your colour and create your macarons this way or if you want to save on wool and you've got some core wool you can use um, a, a cheaper sort of core wool which I've got here which is this sort of loose mixed blended core wool which is, is really cheap. Now don't start with too much wool because it will get um, it will get bigger. We will be building it up. I've just got a 38 standard needle here. That's all you need. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab hold of this core wool and I'm just going to pull everything towards the middle. And I'm just going to felt that a few times just so it holds. Turn that round and then bring it in. You want it bunched in nice and tight and this will all be underneath and it will also be covered so you're not going to see this. Keep pulling that in. And this is, this is such an easy project. It's really fast to do. Once you've done one and you've got the technique then you can sort of steam ahead. And, um, and make as many as you want and also here you can you can either do piped sort of cream here or just keep it simple with a nice just simple strip of um, wool felt around the sides. I use wool top for that because I like to pull it really tight and then it doesn't break but carded wool is just as good you've just got to hold it a bit closer So can you see how that's starting to form into that little that little shape? And you don't. The great thing about this is you don't need um, a cookie cutter to create the shape. And I always um, cookie cutters are great, but um, I can be a bit clumsy and I tend to catch them with my needle, so I end up with a lot of breakages. So wherever I can get away without using a cookie cutter. I do. And can you see how I'm just felting around these sides now, just to flatten those sides because we want that nice flat sort of edge. And it doesn't have to be over felted, it wants to be quite plump and springy. And as I said, remember, we're going to be covering it with our wool batting. I use batting over the top of this because it shows less needle marks and it's really, really good for wrapping sort of soft sculpture type projects. There we go. And make sure as well that we've not flattened that middle, we've not pushed that middle in because we want it nice and full. And if you find when you've, when you've felted, if you find that you've got a little bit that's dipped in then just pop some more wool on top whatever wool you're using it doesn't matter and then just um, fill that in and don't over felt it just keep it nice and soft you see there you see it's quite it looks really misshapen but it won't matter because once that batting um, is covering it you won't see any of that. So there you go, that's your, your basic shape for your macaron. So I've got some nice sort of lilac-y wool batting here, I'm not going to need all of that. 
So I'm just going to pop that piece in and then I'm going to pull this over to the centre and I'm just going to gently felt that in a few times. See what this is going to be. I'm just going to take that little bit of vegetable matter out and then I've got a little bit too much here. So this is the other good thing about uh, using a, a, a carded bat is you can pull it off quite easily because the fibres are much shorter than they are with wool tops. Wool tops will work absolutely fine. It just, um, you just takes a little bit longer, a bit more working and more prone to showing the needle marks. So can you see how I'm just folding that over? See how that's coming over and then what's happening is it's really felting nicely around there and if you've got gaps like I have there that's fine. We'll, um, we'll cover those with any little bits of batting as we move on. And then I've got quite a lot here so I'm just going to hold that there and pull that away. And I'm just going to, and you're using your needle all the time just to pull that wool in to secure it. You don't want any baggy bits, but what you want to be doing is, is doing all the felting in the centre where you're pulling all the wool in together. A bit bulky there, so I'm just going to pull that little bit off. There we go. And then keep using your fingers to go around, tidy that up and then use your needle as well. That's why I like to use a 38 because as you can see it's not very bendy so you can actually use it as a, as a really good tool just for, for pulling that wool in. If you're using a 40 which is um, great for surface detail and I use that a lot as well um, you'll find that it's, it's much more bendy and more prone to breaking. So I tend to have two needles that I use in my felt box all the time. One's a size 38 standard like this one um, and the other one is a, a 40 triangular for finer surface details so that you're not leaving so many needle marks. So as you can see, right, I've got a bald patch there which we don't want. So just take some of that wool that you've, you've pulled off, just take that, wrap it round and do exactly the same as you have been doing. Same technique, just pull it gently round, go around the other side. And you see how because these fibres are shorter and more lofty, you're really not seeing any needle marks. And if there are any, you can just, again, use that needle just to tease that wool over and get rid of them. But this is going to be underneath our little, our little cake. And we're almost done with the a very very simple project and if you just want to relax and, and chill out I mean if the weather's nice you can sit in the garden that's the great thing about needle felting it's so portable and again as with if you watch the other video tutorials I did the the spring garlands with all the the felted balls um, you can just use up any scraps of wool because you don't need a lot and like I said if you wanted to to do the whole thing out of out of the wool batting you can do that as well. So either way works. So there we go, so we've got a nice shape there, just tease that a bit over. So what I'm going to do now is I've got some some wool top here, this is a bright white but you could use, um, I think I've got, let's have a look, so this is a more of a creamy sort of peachy colour so you could use that and then this is um, a, a natural in fact I'll use the natural because that's more of a creamy colour so this is a, a natural this is a Jacob top and you're just going to pull a little bit off there we go so can you see that and when you pull on wool tops, unlike the carded wool, which is much shorter fibres, it will pull apart. The wool tops are much more difficult. They just sort of the, the wool just grabs um, hold of itself and, and tightens up. That's because these are all brushed in the same direction, whereas the uh, batting um, or carded wool is actually brushed in, brushed in lots of different directions. But this is ideal because let's pull that wisp off. 
and you can cut it as well don't be frightened to, to just trim it so just take the end and just felt in you see what I'm doing there just felt in that end you want it push it quite away in because you want that to be really nice and secure because we're going to be pulling on that and as we pull on it what you'll see is you can twist it just to strengthen it a little bit more and as you pull it you can see how that is making that indentation into that soft outer layer so you've got that nice sort of cakey macaron look and just keep pulling that around and if you get about halfway and you can just give it a few pokes with a needle just to secure it there so you can then let it go and then if you want to you can keep twisting it just to keep a nice line as you go around turning and turning until you get to the other end and see what we've got there and then if you just pull your fingers apart and just pull that away and then just continue to wrap around until you get to the end you can trim it but um, the ends um, once you've cut the end you've um, damaged the the fibers that they're cut so that then they don't interlock as well you just need to work them a little bit more so can you see there how that has now created that sort of indentation in the center here and we're a bit out of shape here but that's fine so what we'll do is we'll just pull that in just gently and go in diagonally now because you don't want to leave needle marks if you can help it and then just go around those edges and just felt in those sides where they're a little bit too big that's better and then if you squish it down use your hands you squish it down you know how you get those macarons where they just sort of fall over the um, the cream that's in the middle and do that with them just go in the edge there go around make sure it's all neat and that, that's your basic um, that's your basic macaron but what you can also do is they have this sort of baked effect around here and this is where you want to show your needle marks so if you go around and you really go at it I'll just show you on what I've done here can you see there you really go at it then it gives it that nice sort of baked look you can keep them um, as as is that's it that's absolutely fine but I quite like this it just um, adds a bit more realism to them so can you see how that is creating that nice baked effect you know where the the macaron where it, where it sort of pulls away as it's baking as it rises I've never actually made a macaron, so I'm, I'm I'm not sure how to make them. I've made um, oh, what's the name? Things like pavlovas and made my own mar meringues before, so I know how that works. And I'm assuming this is very similar. So there we go and can you see that you've got that nice baked edge and then you can go around and do the same on the other side if you want to and there we go there we have it a really simple quick easy project to make gorgeous colorful little macarons. 
and if you want to watch more of my video tutorials make sure you subscribe down below hit the subscribe button and then you'll get your automatic notifications of any new tutorials that pop up on YouTube so thanks for watching and I'll see you soon